Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Fryman, the Chief of Hepatobiliary and Pancreatic Surgery at St. Joseph Medical Center here in Towson, Maryland. I'm here to t today to talk to you about uh, common bile duct injuries. Common bile duct injuries occur during laparoscopic or open cholecystectomy. Uh, the rate is under uh, 1%, which has uh, been relatively stable for a long time. Initially, there was uh, an increase uh, in the rate when laparoscopic cholecystectomy came into existence. And after the learning uh, period, the rate has come down to still under uh, one, less than 1%. So what is uh, what are we talking about here today? Well, I'm going to draw. I'm not the greatest drawer. Uh, this is the liver, and the biliary system. This is the bile duct or the biliary system. So this is the uh, common bile duct, and I'm just going to abbreviate it. Now the, the gallbladder lies on on the liver in what we call the gallbladder false or the gallbladder bed and attaches to the common duct via the cystic duct. So this is the cystic duct and this is the gallbladder. Um, and this area here is what we call the uh, is what we call closed triangle. And in there, there's also a, a, a blood vessel called the cystic artery, which supplies uh, blood to the gallbladder. So during cholecystectomy, the goal is to place two clips on the cystic duct, or more. Sometimes people put three clips. And to clip the uh, artery in order to separate this from the common bile duct. And then that allows the surgeon to remove the gallbladder from the, what we call the liver bed. What happens when there is a common bile duct injury is there is, a, there is typically misidentification of this, this cystic duct or the junction of the cystic duct with the common bile duct. Uh, and this can happen anywhere from up here what we call the hepatic plate to down low in the uh, common bile duct. But essentially there is misidentification um, for a myriad of reasons and clips are placed across the common bile duct and the bile duct is divided with removal of a portion of the uh, of the bile duct. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and draw this common duct without the liver now. So, as you can see, there's, there's misidentification, and some of the reasons why we get misidentification is, well, one, it could just be, could be the angle. You know, the cystic duct, for example, could be angling like this, and when the gallbladder is on tension, especially with, uh, when we do that, let me do the procedure laparoscopically, there's, there's tension on the gallbladder in, in, in this direction. And there could be, and some people feel it could be even an optical illusion. If you have this on tension, it, you can imagine how this, it could be misidentified that the cystic duct is actually here as a continuation, you know, if, you, if you would imagine, like this. And division is performed here. And, and that's one of the reasons when we do this, when we do the procedure, we now try to get this to divide this cystic duct as high as possible uh, in relation to the gallbladder. So what we do is when we identify it, we want to clip it you know, really high so we avoid these type of injuries. So injuries can occur anywhere you know, from here. And there is, there is a uh, medical classification system which is, is a little bit detailed and I'm not going to get into it. Um, but it essentially what it does is it classifies injuries by the degree, degree of uh, damage to the bile duct and the height 
And the reason this is important is that the reconstruction can be quite difficult. So now basically what happens is you have a divided system. And if the surgeon identifies the injury at the time of, of the, uh, the cholecystectomy, he can either, if he has expertise, repair it uh, at that time or call in a um, specialized uh, hepatobiliary uh, surgeon who can come in and do the reconstruction. And the operation that we now perform uh, for this is a what's called a Roux and Y, and I'm going to, it's a Roux and Y hepatico jejunostomy, and this is the hepatic duct, and this is the jejunum, which is a small bowel. Can't spell today. That's the jejunum. This is a piece of small intestine that's brought up in a what we call Y fashion, um, and it is sutured to this area. Um, it's important that this portion of the bile duct have a, a good blood supply. Um, sometimes when there's injury to the common duct, there's also injury to what, what is called the right hepatic artery. Um, and that needs to be identified if it happened because uh, the surgeon may want to do the reconstruction at a higher level. What bec so this is the immediate repair. What becomes a more um, critical situation is when these, these injuries are misidentified, not, not misidentified, when these, injury, when these injuries are um, go unnoticed essentially and the patients come back um, with um, either bile peritonitis or sepsis. So what happens in the, in the situation when the injury is misidentified? Well, a lot of times the patients have had laparoscopic cholecystectomies. They're not in the hospital. They're home. They're just not feeling well. Um, initially, they just have a little bit more pain. Frequently, they call the, the doctor's office, at, you know, a few times saying that they're not feeling uh, perfect or that this, that, that this operation may have um, caused more um, it causes them more pain than they originally had thought and the doctor maybe just orders some uh, additional pain medicine because it's really not clear that there's a problem at this point. What happens after a few days is that the bile which is produced by the liver obviously like we talked about um, builds up and these clips um, blow off so essentially, you have the spillage of bile in the peritoneal cavity, and um, and bile is very corrosive. It's uh, it's almost like a detergent, um, and patients have a significant amount of uh, pain when there's bile in the abdominal cavity or peritoneal cavity, um, and then subsequently the bile can get infected and patients can come in with uh, severe severe pain and fever and just not feeling well. And the diagnosis is initially a CAT scan or an ultrasound will show fluid under the liver. Um, and a lot of times what we'll do is, is a HIDA scan, um, which is a nuclear medicine scan, which actually shows the uh, leakage of uh, bile from the duct. Um, which keys us into uh, the diagnosis of a bile duct transection. Um, at this point, um, our gastroenterology colleagues will do an ERCP and inject dye in the distal duct. Um, and then when you inject dye into the distal part, there is uh, extravasation. So how do we handle this situation? Do, uh, we clearly can't rush back into the operating room to repair this. And, and the reason that we can't at this time is that the bile is so corrosive that this is very inf that this bile duct is very inflamed in this area. And putting it back together with sutures um, is usually doomed to failure. So the first step is drainage. First thing is that we're going to do is establish drainage and control 
control of uh, what we call sepsis or infection. So these are the uh, number one and number two priorities uh, in this situation. Um, the majority of times the control of sepsis can be performed um, with CT guided drainage. So our radiology, interventional radiology colleagues will put drains in this area here to basically control the leakage of bile to the outside. So this is to the outside. These are into uh, usually JP bulbs. The patients are maintained and treated with antibiotics. Antibiotics. Um, and the delay for the surgical um, procedure is, is usually in the three month mark, sometimes the four month mark, depending on how, how they're doing. Now, depending on how sick they are, they, they could be in the hospital an additional week or two weeks um, just controlling the sepsis. So after three months time, the patients are taken back to the to the operating room. This is once again the liver. Um, and this is what this is the right hepatic duct, that's the left hepatic duct. So after three months this area is identified. Um, there's usually drains here. Some surgeons will place what's called transhepatic catheters uh, beforehand. We tend to, we, we usually do not do this. Uh, initially we did but we found that um, it's very difficult for the radiologist to get into the non-dilated system um, and quite honestly I haven't really found it helpful um, but what is helpful is just to follow this catheter to the duct and depending on the level of the transection once again the reconstruction is performed it's also important preoperatively usually through an arteriogram or a CT angiogram to develop to determine whether the right hepatic artery has been injured. Um, there's been some um, anatomical work that's been done to show that if the uh, right hepatic artery has been injured or ligated, which can occur at, is, in as many as 30% of, of patients who've had, their, who've had this type of complex injury, um, it's important uh, in patients who've had the arterial injury to, to perform this a reconstruction in a very high location and what we actually do is do what's called the left duct approach where we the majority of the uh, suturing is actually to the left duct a little bit of like a smiley face reconstruction and the intestine is actually brought up in this type of fashion like this um, and we've had we've had better success doing a long uh, an ass a long opening I mean a wide opening rather, which makes sense, right? The wider the opening, you know, the the, the longer or the better chances, as long as it has a good blood supply, that this will stay uh, open. So this is this is our preferred uh, approach um, to these injuries that occur, especially in a, in a delayed uh, fashion. Patients are usually in the hospital after this reconstruction from anywhere from five to seven days. Um, um, Follow-up uh, is in the office and we look uh, at the liver function tests every three months uh, with hope that there is normalization. This concludes uh, my tutorial on common bile duct injuries. Uh, please visit my website at www.liverandpancreascancer.com um, for further information. Thank you.